the moment you are able to achieve your milestone at periodical interval and the track record will definitely helpful in achieving a good valuations and i'll give the example <coughs> of one company see many of you about know about wild craft and i sico has invested there sidbi has also invested in that particular company when the company made loss we are about to back out we didn't give funding but this is sikwa capital they are the venture cap capitalist they came forward class house he told me raman was there told very clearly hum to aage dekhte hain we look forward at the long term this is a particular company will do extremely well in the long run and because of that i am investing so that way they look at the valuation also and but if you go for a debt or a major instrument they look for the short term that is important if we could investment always go for the long term i think subhas can add subhas sir yeah, from the valuation part uh, just taking taking the second question first all businesses exist to make profit in the long run because you can't survive without profit uh, that's for sure amazon is probably an exception that's okay uh, because profit also ultimately fung- becomes a, a parameter for valuation however organizations in growth mode particularly these startups who are who are trying to grow at a very fast pace now i was uh, the other day i was chatting with a a, a private equity fund and um, pvc whatever they were looking at a model of tttdd i didn't understand that I said what is this model of tttdd so he explained to me triple 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 double double so the the growth pace in 5 years so he wants the business to triple 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 then double double and then he'll think of investing today looking at the next 5 years so these are investors who are actually chasing growth any investor who chases growth naturally in the initial phase that's how it is they would value valuation more than profit because their objective at that point in time is to reinvest whatever money you can make into the business and capital appreciation is the game so it really depends upon whom you are interacting with if your investors are public market investors as in the case of subex as in the case of palatro my life has largely been with them then profit I mean, capital appreciation is important but profit is extremely important as well because they look at capital appreciation as a function of profit so you can't have a public company which doesn't make money year on year you have to have that so really who are your investors and then depending upon who your investors are and what their plans are and all of that that's what it is now coming to the valuation itself as a subject uh valuation many a time is an art it's not there's a lot of science behind valuation and we can have a dcf method of valuation discounted cash flow method but if you don't have cash flow itself in a in a company which is not in profit then what do you do with dcf so you have to look at uh, so when when you look at valuation they they look at various parameters you can't say product will be valued more than services though generally it is because of the attributes of a products company a product company will have ip generally services will not have ip a product company could have a model which is very recurring in nature recurring revenue and it's very scalable and more importantly it's very non linear a services business is not non linear i mean generally though today the services companies are trying to become non linear by bringing in ip and all that that's fine but inherently a services business is non linear is not non linear it's very linear whereas a uh, product business inherently is supposed to be non linear so investors look at non linearity scalability and uh, you know things like ip you know the recurring nature of the business and all these aspects when they value it so in in your kind of product when they look at that where is the recurring nature of the business i, mean, I don't know i don't know exactly what your revenue model is how you sell it you know all that kind of stuff i don't know so they look at things like that and how easy how how strong is your ip can somebody copy it tomorrow and do a me too product which is exactly like yours and there's no differentiation for you 
because differentiation is very key. Uh, so they, they look at all of that. So entrepreneurs need to be cognizant of all these aspects. And when they pitch a story to an investor, they have to think about these aspects and position uh, accordingly, assuming you have those in your business. That's, that's how I would look at uh, valuation. The question is, uh, I just had one more part to it, is once the revenue comes, yeah. then is there some, something definite? You see, uh, so there you can have a multiple on revenue, you can have a multiple on EBITDA, you can have a multiple on patch, you can have a multiple on various things. Um, it depends upon the, you know, up to where, what point that the organization is in its journey that they look at these different kinds of things. There's a very interesting thing. A pre-revenue company is valued on a dream because there's no revenue anyway. So you can give any multiple and do any, anything. The moment you have revenue, it's more realistic in nature. Yes, so then they will start looking at those kind of things. So when, uh, when for example, when Palatro went public uh, three months ago in, uh, in London, uh, we were valued on PAT only because we had a PAT. So it's, it was a negative, it was a bad thing to have a PAT. If we did not have a PAT, they would have valued us on revenue which when we would have, we probably would have got higher revenue. It's possible. So, because you look at, uh, you know, when you look at another company, comparables, I mean, comparables is very important. All, many, many a time, valuations are done on what's called comps, which is short for comparables. So they look at similar companies, how, how are they valued and stuff like that. So if you look at some, uh, a similar company in, in, uh, in London Stock Exchange, and look at, and, and they're, they're not making profit, and they're getting a much better multiple then, than probably what we are getting at this point in time. It can happen. So, yes, when you have revenue, your situation may not be truly better. But if this is a business where people do not trust your ability to generate revenue, and then you have generated, then for such a business, yes, revenue will be a good, uh, having revenue will be a good thing, having profit will be a good thing. So it, it really depends upon the business, so many, so many things uh, you know, like that. Any more questions? Hi, my name is Sanu Padmanabhan. I'm an alumni of NSS um, Engineering College, Palakkad. My question is, I started, I mean, I began my startup with myself and the founders to expand my team, which means I need to recruit people who invest, who wants to invest themselves into the business as much as I do. How do I do that? To get talent into my business. How do you do it? Yeah, I mean. The Take it, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you like that question. I'm the one who's been bruised the most. Yes. So, uh, okay. Uh, see, as I said earlier, the culture of the organization is a culture of the person or the people who are running the organization. Similarly, when you're a startup, people do not join you looking at the salary or the workspace and all that because all that will be subpar at that point in time, right? You can't pay like a Microsoft or an Oracle or somebody like that. It's, and even your, your digs will not be that good, your office you know, like will not be all that great, all of that. And they'll be expected to do a lot more things as compared to, uh, recently a friend of mine, um, actually a colleague of mine from Subex, uh, quit Subex a few months ago and joined the startup. Within two months he was back in Subex. So the, the reason he said was that, I didn't even have anybody to file my papers in that company. That's a startup. Startups don't have these kind of environments. Now, coming back to your question, so what do you have to do as a founder? You have to sell the future. People join you not for the present. They join you because of your past and for your future. Because of your past means it's because of what you have done in the past, your track record. If you don't have a track record, then naturally they won't trust you. So it's because of your past. But they're joining you for the future. In an MNC, you join you for today. It's fine, not a problem. You join a Microsoft for today. That's okay, because it's already arrived. So you have to have that story for them. You have to have that vision for them. And you should be able to articulate that in a language which they will understand, which they can relate to. So it can't be ethereal. It has to come down to, so you're speaking about a, something which is a 35,000 foot uh, high, which is some, that high, but you have to bring it down to that 10 feet level or whatever to explain to them, make them understand, and then get them to buy into that story of yours. 
And once they buy in, they join you. And then they keep questioning you every day. Right? So on a daily basis, you have to articulate that, you have to reiterate, reiterate that, and finally you have to deliver it, of course. That's, that's the whole idea. So that's pretty much the only way you can, uh, you know, this, this is a challenge which I face on a daily basis, even today. There is, there is one book, Sinu, uh, Subhrata Bhakti's Elephant Catchers, that talks a lot about uh, startups and how you grow out on that one. That's, that's what I'll I I'll just, if you, any of you are building techie groups, techies are a different animal. They don't need the future. They just need to do epic shit with technology now. <laughs> so that's the dream you build, uh, you know, you, you sell to them. Uh, if you have a really known engineer doing, and the tech piece is very challenging, latest technology, cool stuff, they're with you, just give them a nice cool t-shirt. There you are. I accept that as a millennial <laughs> attitude. There you are. Any more questions? Are we running out? Yeah, okay. Uh, Can no, this be the last question? Go ahead, go ahead. Entrepreneurs finding it so easier to mushroom in the Western world. And what is it that lacks in India which does not allow entrepreneurs to really get in? I mean, ideas are great, because I find that probably one out of 10 Indians have a lot of ideas, and a couple of drinks brings uh, much more ideas. But then I've seen that uh, in the US specifically and other parts of the world, it's much easier for entrepreneurs to come up. We have these big stories about wealth creation, organization to happen. Uh, there's something which is lacking in India. I don't know if it's the environment or whatever it is. So I just want to understand, you know. Is it Isn't that, uh, why, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the idea is uh, on an equivalent base, a US idea uh, gets fructified and implemented much faster and I'm better. Saying there are more entrepreneurs easily who come up. They come up very well the in the US, probably because of the in, uh, environmental system. <coughs> and in India, they are not able to uh, probably set out to do what uh, the, it's 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 a country specific question now if we, two thing i can tell about tr you see the gdp i think if we compare uh, our gdp and us gdp so our gdp is hardly 2.1 trillion and uh, china is about 11 billion point 7 us probably is close to 17 trillion do you see that you know in Indian contest, uh, more than 50% people, they live in rural areas. We all talk about technology, but probably the uh, technology users are not that much. There is huge income disparity in our country. See that, although our Per capita income, maybe, I don't know, but uh, close to <coughs> uh, some uh, 1,100 uh, dollar, maybe, yeah, India? $1,500. Sorry, $1,500. And China, it is more than $8,500 per capita income. So Indian countries, what many companies, they come to India, taking the, you know, what the big story about the demography. We have a lot of populations, about 1.3 billion people. But are these 1.3 billion people capable of purchasing a service or a product? How much are they in? So this is a real challenge. When you analyze the whole thing, you see that always you'll find there is a limited customer for anything. The now need of the hour is that we have to upgrade. We have to see that those are at the bottom of the pyramid, they come to the next level. Those are at middle income level, they come to higher income level. So this is that ecosystem, so this is that enabling environment we have to create. Probably I think in that, when we are able to achieve that, when we are able to reduce the in, in, inequality, then things will be better. And uh, this is the most important study I have read. So my, I, my point is this, sir. I understand from a brick and mortar point of view, but then let's, when we are talking about technology space, today it's become borderless, you know? 
not only here properly. Yeah, so I'm saying uh, in the technology space, countries have become borderless. Your market is the global market, right? So an individual coming out with an idea, whether it's an Amazon or a Google or any of them, whether he's in US or in India, he has access to the same market. So what I was asking is, why is it that you know, entrepreneurs find it much easier to uh, come up and get established <coughs> in the Western world uh, than them ha coming, uh, than that happening in India? Each of doing business started already in India. You see that you know defense sector, it is now opened up. 30% offset clause has come. Earlier it was not there. You have a lot of road, red tape and protocol. Even many of our startup companies, they want to be established in US because the transfer of money and uh, dividend, we have a tax element on that. See, unless you create that renewable environment, each of doing business, you global market or domestic market, I don't think entrepreneur will, will be more interested in taking up entrepreneurship or you know, taking up the manufacturing service activities. Now, again, it is a myth. I'm telling yeah. you that Subhash told about failure. Failure is a stigma in India, but not in the rest of the world. If you are a failure, your civil record goes bad. Once your civil record goes bad, probably you are not getting finance from the formal banking source. If you're getting finance, you have to pay a premium on that. So most important that we have to remove all this red tape and protocol. So then only the things will be better. I think a lot of things has been done on that. Take for example, the GST has come. It's a wonderful thing. IBC has come. Insolvency and bankruptcy code has come. Again, for the startup, they're again coming out with uh, some exit rule also in line with IBC so that no more startup will be failure. If I fail in one project or one venture, doesn't matter. You can take up another one. So that regulation has to come. That particular policy has to be made. Then only the conducive atmosphere will be there. And I'm happy to say that a lot of work has been done in this direction. Lot of Act has been amended, lot of act has been scrapped, even right from labor laws to factory inspections. See the benefit given by the government. For a startup, no inspector arrives. No inspector will come to you. And you get whatever profit is there, you can take it for seven years. So a lot of things are coming up now. I think with this, things will improve. But it may take time. Annie? I'll, I'll just, uh, I have very, very short, I think we are overshot on time. Uh, so the thing we've found is, um, uh, see the cycle time for closing deals uh, in India is way longer than what's happening in, in the Western markets and that market is more mature. So if you're talk, talking about technology products, uh, sitting here in India and doing a, a, a deal in US is not so easy, one, because um, the user, knowing the user, user requirements, customer needs, etc., uh, it takes slightly longer, unless you are saying that you also have an arm there and you're trying to attract that market. But if you're solely focused on India and the Indian market, then one is it's, it's a cycle times are harder, so it's a harder business. The other is a funding availability there versus funding availability here, right? You have a great idea, you get better support and funding there, and ideas flow where the funds are. So that, that is the thing. Uh, a counter to that is uh, fresh desk, right? Uh, so Girish Madhubudam. Uh, I do remember talking to him and he was saying that uh, he was seeing the end of the road. Uh, as in he had six months of runway and that was it. At that point he was uh, in a, uh, he participated in a challenge which Microsoft had led which uh, was giving $40,000 to the winner. And fresh desk has, happened to be the winner. They got that $40,000 and he was thinking, should I extend the runway using that $40,000 or should I find new markets? So he used that $40,000 for uh, massive digital marketing across the globe and found about 11 regions where 
his product hit a sweet spot. And he went after that. And from there it was like, you know, it, it took off from there. We don't say the story very often, but it, it was very gratifying to uh, know that working with corporates have advantages like this in a sense, but also thinking about giving it that bet sometimes in finding new markets and how do you use that short runway. When you see that end of the runway, how do you think about what to do next and stuff like that? See, if your question is very specific to technology startups. If it is, I would like to add something. It is. Um, so you see, I, I think the reason is because I'm working on some ideas towards the blockchain space. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I found a huge disparity. Yeah. Between yeah. the US and the US. Okay. Um, see, it's the ecosystem, I would put it that way, which has got various aspects to it. One is, of course, a fear of failure and the stigma attached to that, which is very, I mean, the Indian social environment and our ethos and all are very different from the Western ethos. Uh, so that is a very big problem. That's a, that's a challenge. Um, if you just go back to a place like Kerala for that matter, I mean, it's, it's largely service oriented, right? You pass out, you work somewhere. That's the whole idea. I mean, you, you don't start something. If you start something, then you've done something wrong. Um, so it's, so it, it is one that, I mean, because it's a fear of failure. And if, if anybody fails, I mean, this guy is useless, over. I mean, written off, I mean, that kind of problem. More than that, if you look at the startup space, now this is one uh, very uh, important aspect which I'm experiencing. In technology startup, I do not think we have the startup culture in the country as yet. I'm talking about the technology guy, the software guys, the engineers, and all the people who are in a startup uh, world. See, India in the software space has largely been on the services side. The life of a software engineer in a, in a services company is dramatically different from uh, the life of a software engineer in a software, in a startup, uh, technology startup, right? So they, they are not able to understand and, uh, you know, kind of uh, morph from being what they were when they were working with an Infosys or a Pro or, you know, somebody like that or a Cognizant or anybody, you know, or, or the back office of Microsoft or, or wherever, to the space. So they are still constantly comparing themselves with the culture that their earlier colleagues and their friends and relatives have in those companies and what they are asked to do here. So the startup culture is a very different sort of culture. We still haven't quite got that. Now for that culture to come, you have to have a very large number of companies. So the flow has to be, you know, the supply has to be quite high. Many of them will fail, some will succeed.